Hey, what's up everybody, and welcome back to The Sanctuary. I'm your host, Professor C, and we're going to do some more A and P today. Specifically, we're going to look at cervical vertebrae, the first seven vertebrae that make up the vertebral column. So, let's check it out. And a pretty nice image over here of the entire seven. I'll put a big check next to. And of course, we label these C1 to C7. And some of them look radically different from the others, so we'll make some generic comments and then we'll take uh, them one by one when we need to. So because they're at the top, right, they're the most superior vertebrae in the vertebral column, you would expect them to have small bodies relative to the one below it, and the one below it, and the one below it. So you'd expect the bodies to be much smaller and much thinner if you compared that, say, to a lumbar vertebrae. Now, for the opposite reason, you're going to see large vertebral foramen. And just so we remember, if I show you this bone down below, which is a generic cervical vertebra, uh, I'll put a VF here. There's the vertebral foramen, right? We know the spinal cord passes through there, and the spinal cord is quite thick up by the brain, and as it goes down the spinal column, it gets thinner and thinner till it tapers off to several points. So, expect the bodies to be small and the vertebral foramina to be large, sometimes larger than the body itself. All seven have transverse foramina. Here's how to spot the transverse processes on a cervical vertebra. Remember, they're the wings sticking out. So, in this single vertebra down here, they look almost to me like ears, like earlobes hanging down. There are the two transverse processes of a typical cervical vertebra. Now, the hole in the center is the ear piercing. None of the other bones in the vertebral column, none of the thoracics, none of the lumbar, none other ones have these holes in the transverse processes. So if you see the earlobes with the pierced ears, you definitely are looking at a cervical vertebrae. So all seven have these. And I can circle some up here. It's kind of hard from this aspect, but there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. It's getting harder to see them here, but there's all seven of those transverse foramina. Now they will facilitate the passage of vertebral arteries and veins that move from the torso up to the, well, the brain. C3 to C6, so not C1, not C2, and not C7. Only C3, 4, 5, and 6 have what we call bifid spinous processes. And I can halo that right here and put it up like that. They actually have a split in the process, a true bifid split, by meaning two, right? So C1 and 2 and 7 have something different. C7 has this long, and I'll illustrate it here, this long hatchet-shaped blade sticking out, and that's called the vertebra prominence. So if you run your finger down the back of your neck, you'll feel a lump down at the base where it almost becomes, well, the next set of vertebrae. And this is called vertebra prominence. It can be used as a surgical landmark. From what I hear, I'm not a surgeon, obviously. Okay, getting up a little close and personal, just to make sure we can find all the parts here. The body, I'll put a B. Remember, it's going to be relatively small compared to the other vertebrae and compared to the hole in the center called the vertebral foramen here, which will be large. The pedicle, of course, is near the body. It's a bridge of bone. There's a pedicle. And on the other side, too, there's a pedicle. That means on the other side, right around here-ish, and it's a lot longer than the pedicle. I didn't do that halo very good, did I? There's the lamina. Beautiful. Now remember, the transverse processes on a cervical vertebra kind of look like earrings, so I'll highlight it here in red. There is an earlobe sticking down. There's a transverse process. And in the center, let me put TP for transverse process. And then the earring, the ear piercing that I talked about, uh, is called a transverse foramen. So I'll put TF. And remember, cervical vertebrae are the only ones that have these piercings in the ear, these places for the earrings. Notice that the bifid 
spinous process sticks out posteriorly very prominently, but this is again an only C3 to C6. 1, 2, and 7 will have something different. Okay, C1 and C2 are so different, we're going to have separate slides for them. C1 is sometimes referred to as the atlas bone. Now, if you can remember some of your mythology, Atlas was the god who carried the weight of the world on his shoulders. So it makes sense that C1 is called Atlas because it is the bone that holds the skull up like the weight of the world. In fact, the skull will articulate here on these articular facets there and there with the occipital condyles of the occipital bone. If you want to check that video out, go back and check out the occipital bone, which I do in great detail. So C1 is the atlas, and it articulates with the skull. It's the only part of the skull that touches the vertebral column. Now, there is no body. So right down here, it just looks kind of like a ring of bone. There is no formal body to this one. It's fused with the one underneath it, which would be called C2. And there is no spine either. So it can't be bifid because it simply has no spine at all. Giant vertebral foramen. You still have the transverse process on either side. And you still have the transverse foramina, the ear piercings in the ear lobes. Okay, C2 is called the axis, mainly because of this fella down here at the bottom who's rotating his head. This allows you to do rotation of the head. So from the top view, it looks like this. Now, real quickly, let me just show you the parts here. Here is a transverse process, and there we can just barely see the whole, the transverse foramen. On the other side, it's even less clear, but here's the transverse process, and then somewhere in here is the transverse foramen. Now this part here that I'm putting a D on, that's probably the giveaway that you're looking at an axis bone. And if you look over here at this image, this bone has been tilted down and you can see how prominent this tooth sticks out. And that's actually what a tooth means, right? Like the dentist studies teeth. The dens is what that is called. It is sometimes called and I'll just spell it out here, odontoid, if I can get it written on the screen, the odontoid process in fancier books. So I still see a vertebral foramen in the center. I still see a spinous process, and it looks like it's kind of becoming bifid, but it looks more like a whale's tail than actually true bifid spinous process. So we say it's not formally bifid yet. And these, of course, here where I'm putting th that lasso and that lasso, those would be the lamina near the spinous process. So C2 is called the axis and has this large tooth sticking out called the dens or the odontoid process that allows you to rotate the skull. It is fused with C1, so if it turns, so does the top. All right, thanks for watching the video on the C1 and C2. Check out some other videos in the series if you want to learn some more. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.